Hi there and welcome to another tutorial by Chimera Models. Uh, in the last episode of our free tutorial, you saw a fantastic tutorial by True Metallic Metal by my friend Riccardo Agostini. I would suggest you to uh, see it if you didn't do that, because it's very interesting and it talks about a very important technique that in the last period seems uh, to be left by the painters because you know the uh, metal non metal seems much, much more cool and juicy to do but in real true metallics is very interesting and very useful in particular for uh, different interpretation of things so it's very very useful but in this case we come back to non metallic metal because i have the opportunity i had the opportunity to film a part of the painting of my last very huge project that is the uh, Galen and Luna diorama from the last Kickstarter of uh, Chimera Models, uh, Tenebre Nightmare Ophelia. And I love the, the painting of this figure. And most of this figure is concentrating in metal no metal because the main figure is a very big paladin with a big animal and everything is covered by a big armor. So it was a lot about painting metal no metal and I had the opportunity to film a little section of this metal no metal uh, painting. Uh, what I will show you is the process from the beginning, that is the preparation on higher brush of the figure. Uh, I will give it to you the list of the color that I used and you can follow me in this process where you can see I am doing sketching and preparing the lights and shadows and arrive till the end of that part. Hope, I hope really you enjoy. Remember to subscribe, to put a like if you like the video and well, enjoy. <laughs> Before starting the video, I wanted to show you the colors that I used for this uh, silver metal no metal. Uh, this is the color chart of the general uh, project, the Galen Luna Diorama, that is not the topic uh, of uh, this video. But I wanted to show you the selection of color that I used for this uh, metal no metal, that is basically everything against red and green. It's a very greenish kind of silver. We will talk about it during the video. Enjoy. Okay, here we go. As you can see, uh, in this first shot, uh, there is a kind of first uh, uh, sketching that is like the main, uh, just the main lights idea. Okay, but uh, anyway, I don't feel myself a lot, uh, a kind of sketchy painter. Okay, there are a lot of painters that start with sketching a lot the figure and then they clean up and clean up and clean up. I have to say that it is, this is not my usual approach in general, uh, but it's my approach on metal no metal always. This is there is a reason for that. This is because um, metal no metal, at least for me, needs to be blocked in terms of effect immediately. You have to see immediately where the main lights goes and how they works immediately in the effect of the figure. So as you can see, the first things that I, I'm doing now is just sketching one light and one shadows. And then I grow with more lights and shadows, okay? At the moment, uh, it's not very important the cleanness because it's a uh, sketching, okay? But it's very important that it's working in terms of general effect, no? First of all, what you can see here is that uh, I am working in a warm side and in a cold side, okay? So the cold side looks bluish and the uh, warm side looks more yellowish, okay? But very important, in this figure, there is no direct blue. What you see as blue in the, in the left part of the figure, it's actually a green. It's the pastel green from the uh, set by Massimiliano Ricchiero uh, of Chimera Models Colors, okay? Uh, but it looks powerfully blue here because all the rest moving much more through the yellow side. So there is red, there is yellow, there is a much more greenish yellow side in the right. And for that reason, our eyes perception uh, gives to our brain the idea that this is blue, but it's not actually not a blue. 
that it's something interesting to work on, okay? Anyway, one side is warm, one side is cold. This is because of the general interpretation of the, of the diorama, obviously, because in the diorama, the uh, uh, left side is exposed to a kind of bluish uh, glow that comes from Luna, from the, from the uh, Enchantress, from this, um, the priest, okay? That makes a kind of spell, very subtle idea of spell that reflect on the armor. It's nothing very powerful, but I wanted this kind of uh, um, contrast between the two sides of the, of the armor. Uh, one important thing when you work on uh, metal no metal, at least in my opinion, is to block immediately the first light. Remember that always the eyes goes to the first light that you put in a figure. And the first light has to be the brightest, the biggest and the most visible, okay? Because the eyes will follow that point, okay? So remember always to decide one main light and then one secondary light, okay? One secondary reflection that has to be less powerful and more little, okay? Uh, shorter and uh, more little than, than the first one, okay? This is the first two, okay? And if you block in the proper way the first two, in general, uh, the metal starts to work, okay? It starts to work in, in, as an effect, as a general effect. Then you can add a lot of other reflection there and there. This is because um, in our perception, metal is something that reflects a lot the world around, okay? So reflect things, reflect nature, reflects uh, walls and different lights that uh, reflect in, in different parts of the environment. So it's something that reflects. And to make, to give the idea that this reflection work, that there is a reflection, uh, you have to add a lot of things that happen, okay, in the, in, the, in the metal. So the idea is you have a main light, you have a secondary one, and then you have a lot of uh, tertiary kind of light, a lot of not uh, main reflection. And this is what I am trying to do in this moment, as you can see. You see, there is a main light that is in the, in the right part, because the right part is the front of the figure in terms of how it is in the in the composition of the diorama, okay? So the other side has to be also more dark. Now, introduction of red. Why I introduce I introduce a lot of red in the in the shadows? This is because two reasons basically. The first one is that the full figure it's uh, a interpretation of modulation of green and red. This is the first thing. The second thing is that the clothes of this uh, paladin will be red. So there will be a lot of red that has to reflect in some way into the armor. Okay, as you see, it starts to work. I mean, it's rough. You see a lot of brush strokes. It's not clean, but it starts to work. It looks like it it's a little bit metal, so we have to improve the lights, okay? Uh, some of, uh, of, of other painters, when they made the, the sketch of metal no metal, they really start from black and they add quite a poor white just to see the final effect very powerfully. I think it's a good approach, but I don't like that. I prefer, because my, my way of approaching miniature was always uh, to build up the lights slowly, okay? So I always prefer to have the opportunity to build up and to add more light, to don't have the white immediately there. It's just my way, okay? okay there is not a proper one and a bad one. Uh, I, I think you can easily start just with black and white and it works. For me, it works better like this because I love to work on details, adding um, adding things, adding information. As you see, my brush strokes here, it's just a, an addition of different um, uh, texture, okay? Uh, I don't like super, um, okay, I, I would say smooth surface, okay? But it's, it's not proper because I also love smoothness, okay? But I don't like too much when a surface is completely clean. I mean, looks 
completely clean. There is no information there. Uh, it's interesting for some interpretation, like for example, if you have to do something that it's like a science fiction ceramic kind of things that has to looks like something really alien. So in that case, it works because you have to feel that looks fake in some way. So like this, I like. Uh, but for some interpretation, but you know, an armor, it's still something that is done by uh, humans and humans uh, uh, doing this with, uh, you know, with hammer and fire and, and with sanding. So the surface, it's not, it's never completely clean. There is something, there are information. Uh, reality, it's full of information. And I am not really interested in to reproduce exactly the reality, but to makes the sensation that something that I paint is believable. Okay, uh, this is a very important thing. So since uh, in the last uh, video tutorial, you see uh, Ricardo paint a true metallic metal, and now I'm painting a non-metallic metal. It's very important that I say you my uh, approach on metallic and non-metallic in terms of when use them. Because uh, in my opinion, and I say this very strictly and I'm very convinced about that, uh, metal no metal never looks real in real life. Never. I, I saw a lot of uh, metal no metals from the best artists in the world and they are fantastic and the metal no metal is fantastic. But there is no way to really imagine that it's metal. It never looks really metal. It looks metal in picture because uh, you, uh, you have just one view and two-dimensional, but in real life, never. And, you know, this is not a problem. I mean, if I paint with metal, no metal, it's not because I want to be realistic. If I want to be realistic, I use true metallics because no metal no metal can be re realistic like a true metallics because this is a 3D figure. It's, a, it's something that you can uh, move on your hand so that reflect the real lights when you see it. And there is no way that our eyes are um, feel a no metal like a real metal because they expected that the light changes when you move it and they expected to see a real reflection uh, of what you see in the environment where you are. So. If you want that your metal really looks like a real metal, the only way is to use real metal. So, Francesco, why you use metal no metal? Because metal no metal, it's funny for all the rest. So the point is not the realism. This is a fantasy figure in a fantasy world, and I want to uh, use metallics to describe another environment, another world. So when you look at uh, a metal no metal, you don't have to uh, ask yourself it's, if it's realistic. You have to ask yourself if it's believable. I mean, it's a believable metal no metal. Looks. Uh, what the, the brush strokes uh, gives to me is the sensation that is metallic. That is the point. But it's not really the research of realism, but it's the uh, freedom of interpretation of reflections. Uh, for example, how I can give with a metal this effect of bluish and greenish and things that happen exactly as I want. Because, you know, it's a trompe l'oeil. You know, it's a fake. It's something that eludes your eyes, that there is an environment, that there is a, a different sensation. And it's very difficult to achieve that with metal because, but because the mission is different. When you do true metallics, it's because you want that the figure is realistic, looks real. I don't want to be a uh, photographic style here. Uh, it's my interpretation of reality. It's an illustration. And an illustration is not realistic. I mean, if you look at, uh, in a video game like uh, World of Warcraft, it's not realistic. The illustration of great artists are not necessarily realistic. There are illustrators that are very realistic, no? Or painters like, I don't know, Ricardo Ferri. It's very realistic. But there are also artists that are not realistic. If you if you look, for example, a great uh, um, comic book uh, designer like uh, Lee, for example. I mean, the, it's not realistic, but it's fantastic and it's believable. That's the point. So metal no metal, it's beautiful because it gives to you the opportunity to make a particular interpretation of the figure. But the point for me is not to searching for the realism. For me, the realism is in the 
real metal side, okay? So he's not researching for, it's not a research for realism, for to be believable. Chimera brushes. They are Kolinsky sable, super high quality, new shapes, especially made for painting miniatures. They are super good, try them, link in the description. Okay, coming back after the fantastic voice of my friend Ricardo that told you about uh, how beautiful are the uh, Chimera brushes and I can say you they are fantastic. Uh, the brush that you are seeing in this moment, it's uh, actually the zero from uh, Chimera brushes. Uh, you don't see the, uh, I mean, um, you don't see the, the, the name on the brushes because uh, it was the beta testing brush. This It was the first one, okay, that I <laughs> that I used, okay, uh, because I am testing at that point the, the new brushes, but uh, I mean, this is exactly the brush that you have if you buy uh, the Chimera brushes, okay? And this is a fantastic brush, okay? Uh, let's go on working on the armor. As you can see, for the first uh, 60 minutes that you follow the video, the video is a uh, three pair more, sp three pair speed up, okay? It's a speeding up of three pair. Uh, that means that basically in this is 60 minutes. We are 60 minutes. It means that it's a work of 45 minutes, one hour, okay? Because there are some cut. It's around one hour of work on sketching, and this is the half of the work. The other half now it's basically all cleaning up, adding details, adding smoothing moment and more textur texturing moment. This is something very important for me. I love to be organic when I paint. I love to have surface with different um, vibration and the brush strokes for me, it's very important. I think that brush strokes is the soul of a painter. This is the reason why I always say that I pass uh, the first year of my painting career, uh, try to hide my brush strokes and the rest of my career to try to find the proper way to show my brush strokes. Um, it's very important. This is my strong feedback. You have to work on your brush strokes, on the feeling of your brush stroke, or on your gesture. And my suggestion is to don't just go into the direction of hiding your brush. Okay, to, to, to follow just the technique on how to proper erase the presence of the brush. Try to work on the way to show your brush properly, to create a surface that it's beautiful to see in real life. I see, I saw a lot of people uh, during my career with a very good uh, sensation of light and shadows, uh, with a very good effect in, uh, in picture, but with a lot of lack of power in here in real life because the gesture was uh, uh, childish i mean you see the the brush strokes and the sensation is not good looks like not a proper brush strokes i mean the difference between the masters and the rest uh, of the of the good painters in the world to me it's much more the power of the gesture in the brush strokes than other else okay so you can recognize a very good artist from his uh, gesture, okay, his or her gesture on brush strokes. For example, I always quote Mark Masklands as an example of that. His gesture is incredible and it's something that he showed to you. It's very visible, okay? It's not something that he hide. He working on show you the brush strokes. And it's what I try to do for all my career in the last 20 years. Try to show the brush strokes, don't erase them, let them be pleasant okay for example in this armor as you can see now the armor start to become smooth but i always stop for one moment and say okay now maybe became too much smooth i don't want that became too much smooth it has to look smooth but if you look proper you have to see there are a lot of information inside this is very important for me Another thing that you can see is that now is very clear the difference between the right side and the left side. I mean, the left side is clearly blue. I repeat that actually it's not a blue, but it's a green, but it's 
very bluish, okay? And the other side is very, uh, it's more, it's more warm. Uh, one important thing that I want that you notice is now, if you look at the armor, uh, the, the part that is, that is painted close to the other parts, looks like all the greenish effect of the, of the figure, it's completely disappeared. I mean, where is the green? Uh, maybe some of you can uh, ask to yourself why Francesco used all this greenish effect at the beginning, how this at the end can became looks like a uh, gray silver, because at the end silver is gray, I mean, it's, uh, it's an, an, a neutral color. You can see that, because I still have this green in the uh, mid-tones and it's inside the colors, but now your eyes are guided by the lights, the main lights and the main shadows. That looks more um, like a, a gray, okay, like silver. Hmm? You see that now I am adding like the very last uh, la highlights, okay? And in the cam, normally uh, camera uh, tends to see the lights uh, a little bit burned, okay? So in real life, uh, there is more modulation between the, uh, you mean the, the last lights. Uh, but you know, this is a problem in general of camera. And this is also the reason why I always prefer real life things. It's very important for me. It, this is another important suggestion. Please, please go to see the figure in real life, in the convention, go to classes, see other people that paint, look in real life how they works, okay? So now this is the last uh, moment of the work. I mean, it's the last uh, uh, touches. That for me is very important because it's where the difference between a good work and a I mean, perfect one, never, never it's perfect, but you know, quite perfect one, it's the last things. So I'm working very tiny, I'm going to, to correct everything. Uh, if I see something that doesn't work properly, I have to change it, even if it's like a super uh, little part, for me, it's very important. I al also use now uh, to increase the, the contrast, you, you know, uh, having the last shadows. In this case, the shadows looks very um, black, but it's not a black. You can see that it's a kind of reddish black, okay? Because my shadows are red, that's the point. You see, I add some more reflection, some little part of sparkling. And you see that I never really smooth the surface in a uh, uh, geometric way. It's always about adding brush strokes, brush strokes, brush strokes, uh, uh, close brush strokes to another brush strokes. Yeah, some last sparkling. Sorry for my end. sparkling. You have to remember that when you had a point of last light somewhere, you say to the people, to the eyes of the people, that they have to look there. They have to look exactly there. So always put a sparkling part in a place that you want people to look. Let's go on. Now, more sparkling, more white. This is like my last light. I'm working on last light and last, and last shadows. Um, it's not very easy to catch it in the camera because uh, as I told you, it's a question of uh, how the camera tends to burn the last highlights. But I think it's quite uh, understandable the difference between the this white that I'm adding now and the one that is inside. You see the difference in sparkling. Okay, it starts to look close to the end, I mean, no? And th this is important for me. Uh, 
most of the questions that I have during classes is when I have to stop, when I can say that it's finished. This is something that's coming with experience, I mean. I think it's coming with experience. Uh, basically, I stop when I feel that it's okay. <laughs> and uh, it's very important to don't go to the overpainting. I mean, one of the most important uh, trick of the masters is to understand where is the moment to say, okay, now, now it's okay, now it's enough. Now it's enough because if I continue, I can overpaint it. And sometimes overpainting is better than not finished. Uh, one of the things that is very important is that when I paint, I always want to try to, um, to have at the end the same power that my first impression has. Normally when you're sketching something in the proper way, this first sketch has a lot of power, okay? And it's very easy if you overpainting a lot to lost this, okay? To, to just go into something that it's completely flurry, you know, cloudy, so too much smooth, and you lost all the powerful things that you that you put in the in the first uh, in the first sh shout, you know, in the first uh, uh, moment, uh, in the first uh, sensation that you have when you paint. I try to conserve that. So the moment when I think I have to stop is when I feel that looks uh, beautiful, that looks uh, finished, that looks proper, but at the same time, I don't cover the first impression, okay? If you see that, what you see in this moment of this armor, and you remember the first sketch, or maybe you can go uh, into the beginning of the video and see the first sketch, there is something of the first sketching moment that is still here. I don't want to lost this power, this intention of the first uh, approach on the figure. Okay, I also give it to you uh, another I say to you another thing, so if you look at the, at the figure now, the main light, it's became it like the only warm part of the armor. Because now, it's like if you have a main yellowish greenish light, and then it goes to the blue on the, on the left, and also onto the blue on the right. So at the end, this gives much more power to the main light because the main light is warmer. It's into the yellow side against the blue side. And you know that uh, um, warm colors looks always more jumping out to the eyes. So when you have to make something contrast very powerful, if you put lights more warm and shadows more uh, cold, you increase the power of the lights. And it's exactly what I did here. I mean, the main color of the armor should be the greenish warm part. But in real, if you analyze what I did, it's much more the bluish part than the, the greenish warm part. I repeat that actually also the blue is a green, but I mean the more blue side part, it's much more blue side than yellow side. But the interesting thing is that the general effect that gives to you is that the real color of the armor is the yellow side. Why? Because I use that for the main light. And remember that the main light, the main uh, reflection guide your eyes, okay? Mm? You, you, can, uh, you can appreciate this more when the, when the figure is in front, I mean, when you can see the wall, the wall uh, um, armor, uh, but I think it's, it's clear, okay? Okay, I am, I am working on adding details and correct things. In this moment, I am using a uh, two zero brushes. Is the two zero that you can find uh, in the in the set of Chimera brushes? Well, as you can see. We are at the end, it's finished. I'm just at some more sparkling moment. This is the moment where I look and I wanted to see if there are some little thing missing, correction, if there are some brush strokes that looks, I mean, random, but random not in a good way. I love the, the sensation of randomness, but 
my randomness is never random. It's exactly where I wanted it to stay, the random brush strokes. But when it looks uh, uh, not very beautiful to see, I always try to correct them. Some more details. And last effect. As you see, I think that it works. Last sparkling, some smoothing. Okay, here we are. And this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoy the trip. For me, it was a very long journey, this figure, and I also wrote a very in-deep article on that figure that you can see in the future, okay? For the moment, I hope you enjoy. I hope you can put a like, you can subscribe, you can see the link on the description of the old things that Chimera do, that we do, and see you in the next video. Ciao.